Good morning. We wish to welcome to Holy Cross all our parishioners and all those who may be visiting and invite you to join in our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives. Ideally, Lent leads us to encounter Jesus, sharpens our visit, vision of his saving mission, and challenges us to be more authentic worship. Like the blind man whom Jesus helps to see, we can exclaim, I do believe, and worship with raised hearts and voices. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Eisman. Father will be assisted by Deacon Joe Placius. Please join in the entrance hymn, hymn number 635, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, number 635. We begin our Eucharist this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you today. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's called Laetari Sunday, which means we should be joyous, we should be glad that Lent is half over and half is coming. But the question is, what kind of a Lent have I had so far? Have I just said, well, yeah. And of course, that's not the way we should respond. We should be, according to our liturgy, eager, willing, and ready to come closer to Christ. Let's see what we have done so far in Lent. Please join me on page eight. I confess Best to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have, have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Yeah. 
devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And now we invite all our young people to come forward for their, their liturgy of the work. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because the man sees appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake, that I give me courage. Oops, I've, <laughs> For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the right of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. 
He spat on the ground and made clay with saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Someone said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like, the, like him. The man said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, I have one question for you. What is it that makes you blind? Let me start this morning with an example for you, a story. I used to work with a deacon, and he used to say about his stories that every single one of them is true, and some really happened. So here is my story. A man had just sat down at his desk to begin his work day when one of his associates came in running into his office and said, you won't believe this. I was just almost killed outside. I had just walked out of the char pit where I buy an egg sandwich every morning. Suddenly, a police car came down the street with its lights flashing and its siren blaring. The police were chasing another car. The other car stopped right in front of me. The guy jumped out and began shooting at the police. I hit the ground and could hear the bullets whizzing over my head. I'm telling you, I'm lucky to be alive. After a moment of silence, the first man said, you eat an egg sandwich every morning? <laughs> the point of the story is that we can become so involved in our own narrow interests that we miss the big picture. The Gospel this weekend illustrates the destructiveness of such narrowness. Jesus had just healed a blind man. Scripture tells us to let God's work shine forth. But by doing this, he threatened the comfortable, ordered life of those temple leaders. How could God possibly be working through someone other than them? If people were to claim God's work outside their structure, then their authority was being threatened. They missed the fact that God was indeed working through that blind man. They were only concerned with their own interests. They focused on the egg sandwich instead of the whole picture. So these temple leaders sought some way to discredit what he had done. They condemned Jesus for working on the Sabbath, even though it was a sign of the presence of the Messiah. Scripture tells us that one of the signs of the Messiah is that sight would be given to the blind. And even though the man's parents testified in earlier scripture that he was indeed born blind, they refused to see the presence of God among them. 
In case you have not figured it out by now, the truly blind were those temple leaders. St. John's Gospel presents this intricate little drama in the ninth chapter as a call for all of us to allow the Lord to open our eyes. The temple leaders were too concerned with themselves to do this, and they, were going, they weren't going to let a carpenter from Nazareth upset their lifestyle. We are all tempted to do the same thing ourselves. We may be pretty set in our ways, and then when we find out that maybe a spouse or children or friends have a big problem, as an example, one of them may be drinking way too much for it not to be a problem, it's easy to close our eyes and hope it goes away. We act as though it is a huge problem for us to give of ourselves, to help solve another person's problem. We refuse to see the Lord calling out to us in others. We don't see the whole picture. We are blind by his presence. Let me talk to the young people here this morning. I have an example for you as well. Say you are in school and some people have been using peer pressure and pushing you to make bad choices or unchristian choices. I hope you know that you can take a courageous stand and say, this is not right, or even, this is not my style. But remember, this could lead to further conflict for you. We don't see the whole picture. This is our opportunity. This is your opportunity to really stand up for Christ. But most young people would rather be a part of the in-crowd. They go along with what is being done and what is being said. You end up being blind to God's presence, calling you to give witness to the power of Christ in the world and to do what is right. My dear friends, God's reality and our human perception of things do not necessarily match. Neither Jesse nor Samuel the prophet thought the future king of Israel would be the most insignificant of Jesse's sons. No one expected the Messiah to be a carpenter from Nazareth. We focus on our perceptions of what God should be like or how God should act, and we miss the big picture his presence in our lives and in our friends and in our families' lives. Even in times of sickness, we expect God to heal us when actually our sickness might be the very way that we draw closer to God. We expect God to solve our problems when actually these problems help us to keep a perspective on what is really important in life. By demanding how God should act, like the temple leaders did, we become blind to his presence among us. My dear friends, this fourth Sunday of Lent, I leave you with the question that I started with. What blinds you? Today, let us all pray for the grace to take the steps to walk from darkness into the light. And now may we proclaim our faith as we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That during this season of Lent, all members of the church encounter Jesus in new ways that deepen their faith in him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the nations of the world will seek to work together in harmony and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That our candidates and catechumens will be strengthened in their desire for unity with the body of Christ and allow God more fully into their hearts this Lent, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all the participants, parents, and coaches of the Holy Cross Sports Program, and that all of us, by the example of our lives, may become Christ, the light of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we follow the model given to us by our teens and their families this weekend by their participation in the Day of Goodness and respond to Pope Francis's challenge, we must not be afraid of goodness or even tenderness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick of our parish may be touched by the healing power of God's love and that all who have died may be welcomed by Christ into the presence of his Father, especially Rose Caparel, Mildred Molly Quinn, John E. Albert, Father Jeremiah Moynihan, a former associate pastor here at Holy Cross, Michael Curtin, and for Ray N. Buonamani, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O loving Father, you continue pouring your graces on each one of us. And you remind us that each one needs to become Jesus to all the people in our lives each moment, each day. We ask this in your name together with the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second collection today will be for Catholic Relief Services. Please join in the offertory hymn, hymn number 507, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born again in, in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end are claim. your son, who comes into your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extended to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last we might love one another through your son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation, Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For about to give his life, 
to set us free, he reclined at supper. He himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessed your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love we offer you what you have bestowed on us the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation holy father we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son and in this saving banquet gracious to and graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Salvatore our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us here now at the table of your celebration, so also bring us together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and all of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in the new heaven and the new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And Let us offer to one another now a sign of Christ's peace. peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Are there any Eucharistic ministers bringing our blessed Lord to members of our parish family? Let us pray. O Lord, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. The Lenten series, sponsored by the Eastern Greece Shalat Catholic Churches, continues this Thursday at 7 p.m. at Holy Name of Jesus Church. Last call for Nighthawks tickets for next Saturday's game. Tickets will be available in the Paris Center foyer after the 5 p.m. Mass Saturday and the 10 a.m. Mass Sunday. Five dollars from each ticket sale will go directly to Holy Cross Youth Ministry. The Lenten DVD series continues this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. in the Parish Center and on Thursday of this week. Please join us for rosary and benediction here in church. Donations are now being gratefully accepted for Easter baskets to be given to the Villa of Hope, formerly St. Joseph's Villa. Please see the bulletin for items needed. Men of the Parish, mark your calendars for next Monday, April 7th, for the Men's Evening of Reflection Details will be in next week's bulletin, but be sure to save the date now. Deacon Joe has an announcement. Just a quick announcement, everybody. For altar servers or altar server parents, or those who want to be altar servers or who have been trained and have not started yet, after Father and I leave, there is a letter on my chair here. Please take one of those home. Uh, even if your server is not with you today, take this home. It's got to be filled out and returned back to me. I appreciate it. Uh, get it back to me as quick as possible. We're trying to line up uh, a good company of servers for our Holy Week services. Thank you. 
There will be a coffee hour after Mass in the parish center, and the recessional hymn is hymn number 699, We Have Been Told, number 699. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go out to love and serve the Lord by serving one another. Thanks be to God.